Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinton here and welcome to tutorial number 8. And in this video we are going to take a look at some typography classes in Bootstrap. So I just want to mention that I've already started off by creating my container, my row, and I've created a column that will span the full width of my container. Okay, and inside of here I'm going to type in all of my typography stuff because generally whenever we type something that we want the user to see, it's going to be inside of a column. So, uh, let's start off uh, by first of all showing you a cool trick with an h1 tag. So I'm going to go ahead and add an h1 and this will say this is a header and I'm pretty sure all of you guys know that this is going to display as a really big heading but um, something I want to show you guys is that if I add a small tag over here and then I type some secondary text so secondary text just like that then basically what we have is a, a heading and this h1 will display as a heading but the small text inside of an h1 actually displays as like a secondary heading so it's um, slightly smaller than the main heading it's just if you guys ever want to take some text from a main heading or something and shrink it down just a little bit so it becomes a secondary heading then this is how you do that so let me go ahead and hit save and I'm gonna jump back over to my browser here and hit refresh and you can see that now I have a heading and then I also have some secondary text on the side of that heading so if you guys just ever want to use something like that and have that kind of cool effect then that's how you do that and uh, the small text or the small tag is not limited to only being used with headings okay you could also have a paragraph and if you use a small text inside the paragraph then um, that would become kind of like fine print kind of like at the bottom of a contract uh, you can maybe say terms and conditions fine print or whatever uh, and yeah that's gonna be really really small text I don't even know if you guys are gonna be able to read this but uh, there we go we have some really really small text displaying in the browser okay and um, yeah that's just how you can use the small tag uh, I also want to show you guys a bunch of other cool stuff so uh, it might happen that uh, you don't want to shrink text down but you actually want to enlarge a paragraph slightly uh, we can go ahead and do that so I'm gonna create two paragraphs here uh, I'm gonna say this is a leading paragraph and then I'm also gonna create a paragraph over here and I'm gonna say this is a normal paragraph okay and I'm gonna go to this leading paragraph and I'm gonna give it a class of uh, lead and if I save that um, by the way this just pops up because I haven't bought sublime I'm just using the free version okay so let me go ahead and save that and if I come back here and hit refresh you can see that now I've got a pretty big paragraph and then I've got a kind of smallish paragraph but it's not quite as small as the um, fine print okay so this is the size of a normal paragraph and this one is the size of a paragraph with the class of lead so if you guys ever want to have like a really big paragraph that catches the user's attention uh, and that would usually be like the first paragraph of your article or something then you can go ahead and apply the class lead to that and it just makes the paragraph nice and big okay uh, so those are some cool typography tricks I also want to show you guys uh, how to highlight text so uh, what I want to do is maybe just create a new column so we can maybe see this a little bit better and I'm gonna give this a class also of uh, col xs12 and in this column I am gonna create a uh, highlighted text so you can highlight text using mark and I'm gonna highlight that uh, mark 
or that highlight word. So uh, mark and ending mark. Oops, forgot Sublime actually closes the tags for me. And uh, I guess we could probably just mark the word mark as well. That's a lot of marking, isn't it? And again, I made the exact same mistake by forgetting that Sublime auto completes everything for me. So now let's jump back over to the browser and I'm gonna hit refresh. And now you can see that uh, the word highlight is highlighted and the word mark is highlighted. And we did that with the mark tag. Okay, uh, now let's take a look at how to strike through some text. Sometimes um, you might want to delete text that's on your page or just uh, mark it as deleted. Okay, you can do that by using the del tag. So del and ending del and uh, here you can put in some deleted text or uh, this is basically if you've ever written an article on your website and then people come back to view it a second time but you find out that the information wasn't so accurate or uh, needed to be removed from the article you can go ahead and surround it in Dell tags and that way it still shows up but it shows up as if it had been crossed out with that little um, strike through the text okay so it's just there um, basically so that the user doesn't think they're at a different article they're still at the same article but you're just acknowledging that the information in this tag was maybe not so accurate and had to be removed from the article um, and you can do the same thing using uh, an s tag so s and uh, ending s and what that does is strike through the text so uh, it it basically looks the same as delete so uh, you can see the two do look very similar deleted text looks the same as strike through text um, and yeah it's up to you to decide where you want to use them but basically deleted tag or delete the le deleted tag will tell bots like Google or Yahoo search engines or something to that that this text is actually deleted it shouldn't be part of the article whereas strike through text with the s would just tell those bots that the information in this tag is not accurate so that's the difference between the two it looks the same to the human eye but to bots or search engine crawlers and stuff like that it will look like this one is actually deleted and it'll just look like this is inaccurate information okay um so now we've got through all of that, uh, let's take a look at some alignment classes because uh, some of you guys will probably want to align text certain ways. Okay, so if I create a, another column over here, excuse the squeakers, my throat is kind of sore from uh, the cold. Well, let me give this a class of coal, XS12 again, and... Uh, over here, I'm going to create some paragraphs. So this paragraph, I'm gonna give a class of text left. And by default, text is always aligned to the left, so you're probably not gonna really notice a difference here, but left aligned text. Okay, I'm gonna copy this line a couple times and just change the class. So one, two, three. Uh, we can also say uh, text center and that will center the text in the paragraph. We can also say text right and that will uh, make the text right aligned. We can also say text justify and that will justify the text. So let me just change all of these uh, descriptions. Centered text, right aligned text. Um, and the last one can be justified text. Justified, if I can spell it right. Let me go ahead and hit save. And now when I jump back over to uh, Firefox and hit refresh, you can see that my paragraph that had a class of left aligned text appears on the left. My paragraph that had a class of right or centered aligned text appears in the center of the column. 
and my class that had right align text appears on the right, whereas justified text, right now you can't really see the difference, but if this column was long enough, uh, this text would be justified, meaning that it would look like it goes from here all the way to here um, without, yeah, basically we need like a lot of lines, but you know what justified means, right? I hope you do, because otherwise this is really embarrassing. Um, okay, so that is just how you justify text. Then uh, let's take a look at something else that's pretty cool that I want to show you guys. Uh, so there's actually two things I want to go through. Uh, and the first one is uh, just how to change your text case, because we can do that using a bootstrap and some fancy CSS. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to type in all lowercase text. So let's go ahead and say uh, this is a paragraph and we need to indent that sum. And this is going to be um, all lower. Well, I'm going to type it in uppercase. This is lowercase. So I'm typing this in uppercase, but I'm going to give this a class of text dash lower case and um, I just need to make sure that that is spelled correctly go ahead and hit save uh, so I've typed this in the code as all uppercase but if we come back and take a look at this in the browser it actually appears all in lowercase okay and that's because of this class and it's using a, a CSS um, attribute called uh, text transform and then it transforms the text to lowercase okay we can also uh, change this class to text uppercase and uh, what that'll do if we type this all in lowercase this is uh, uppercase then what text uppercase does is it transforms all of this lowercase text to uppercase text okay so if I come back here and I hit refresh, you can see that now all this text appears as uppercase text, uh, but I typed it in the code as lowercase text. So if you guys ever want to maybe change the case of some text, make it uppercase or lowercase, then that is how you do that with CSS or uh, bootstrap rather. Okay. And the last thing I want to show you guys is a block quote. So I'm going to create a um, tag over here, block quote, and it is quite a long one, but let me go ahead and create a paragraph now. And um, what I want to do is actually just copy some of this. So I'm on the other screen at the moment. You guys can't see me, but what I'm doing here is just grabbing uh, all of that lorem ipsum. And then I'm also going to add a footer and ending footer hi i always forget that this actually um closes the tags for me someone famous okay so what a block quote does is actually creates a block quote so in other words it's a quote of some text that's maybe in your article okay so let's say you spoke to someone famous and they said something and you wanted to quote that out on your site. You could do that by just surrounding it in a block quote and it looks pretty awesome actually. It's got that little uh, line on the, on the left hand side. We've got the actual quote and then you can take that footer and whatever's written in the footer um, gets that little dash before it and then uh, basically will just tell us who actually said that. So let's say Brad Pitt said something really hilarious. It was like a joke or something. Go ahead and put that here and then add Brad Pitt's name over here. Okay. Um, and we can also reverse this block quote. So if I say class and I give that a class of block quote dash reverse, I think that is uh, the class. Then let me come back here and hit refresh. And you can see that now the quote appears right aligned instead of left aligned. We've got the line over here on the right. And yeah, it basically just takes the block quote and puts it in reverse, which is pretty cool if maybe you want the quote to be on the right hand side. Okay. 
And yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you guys in this video. If you want to learn more about bootstrap typography classes, you can go over to getbootstrap.com slash CSS. And uh, yeah, you'll be able to learn a little bit more about some of the typography classes. But that's all I'm going to show you guys. So don't forget to subscribe. Please feel free to leave a comment, like and share this video. It's really going to help my channel grow and I will see you guys next time.